Today in Lore Gear we look at one of the most recognisable figures war gear in the entire 41st millennium. This is of course, the Emperor of Mankind. The Emperor is both the saviour and continuing protector of humanity. The enduring figure of the Emperor of Mankind pervades all human existence in the far future as he sits upon his golden throne, a broken, rotting corpse of a man, but forever as the most supremely powerful figure within the Imperium. The Emperor is the centre of humanity in the 41st millennium, arguably barely human and continuing to protect mankind forever after his mortal wounding during the final battles of the Horus Heresy, were it not for his ever-present voice and emanations, searching, guiding, protecting and planning, then the Imperium of Man would undoubtedly slip back into the darkness of self-destruction and oblivion. During the period of the Great Crusade whereby the Emperor and his Astartes legions would battle and forcibly reunite the then fragmented and broken colonies of humanity, he would iconically wear the golden artificer armour that is now so recognisable, wielding his unique weapons of power and craftsmanship. Considering this powerful war gear was wielded by the Emperor himself, there's actually little information specifically about what the Emperor may have used at any one time. The pieces we know of are of course the Golden Artificer armour, his sword and lightning claw. It's fairly speculated though by many, why would the Emperor even require armour, given how powerful of an individual he was. And it's true of course that the Emperor's main strength was purely himself, and his immense godlike, unquantifiable psychic power. And for sure it's truly doubtful how necessary his armour was. It's much more likely that his armour while being expertly crafted, and by any reasonable standards very powerful, just like any Astartes armour, but it was much more generally for visual impact and for kind of more diplomatic and to some degrees levels of intimidation. It's worth remembering the context of this time, that the Emperor was attempting to position himself as the leader of humanity, and portraying this image, no matter how much he would state otherwise, of a godlike individual. His assertions of him being only a man were far too easy to dismiss for many, especially individuals lost on ruined colonies of humanity who would bear witness to this being, this shining beacon of light clad in beautifully mastercrafted golden armour. One other item often speculated about but unconfirmed is the halo seen around or just behind the Emperor. We often see this in images of him, and while many religious figures in the Imperium are shown with halos, the halo around the Emperor looks very similar to that of a piece of war gear known as an iron halo. And this is a literal physical halo that sits behind or around the head of its wearer and creates a personal force field. In the modern age of the Imperium, these halos are powerful pieces of war gear and often only worn by captains or chapter masters. They may also sometimes be worn by veteran Astartes. We also see behind the Emperor on his armour an Imperial Aquila, the Double Eagle. Again, chaplains and ecclesiarchy in the Imperium often wear an item known as a Rosarius, and this takes the shape of an Aquila. And as with the Iron Halo, it creates a personal force field. Both these items create a field known as a conversion field. So why might we speculate that this was worn also by the Emperor? Well, for one thing, these energy fields convert the kinetic energy of weapon impact into light. They're quite powerful as personal shields go, and it would not at all be an unworthy thing for anyone in a senior position in the Imperium to be wearing, they still do now. There's also the idea that a conversion field could be used to create an impression of power, and to demonstrate something like a holy aura has already been demonstrated in the history of the Imperium. When Vandire, a mad High Lord of the Administratum, used such a field to falsely deceive the then Daughters of the Emperor, now known as the Sisters of Battle, that he was actually protected by the Emperor's holy protection, upon seeing the blinding light and Vandir unharmed, this convinced them of the story he was telling them. But this is a whole other story. However, he was using a conversion field and the light and the impact of this made them believe that he was in fact protected by the Emperor's holy aura. Still, would the Emperor want to be perceived this way when he has so regularly been adamantly against religion during the Crusades? It's very debatable, but some people do believe that the whole situation of the Emperor trying to be anti-religion was simply so that he could eventually position himself as that true godlike figure for the Imperium, which of course he has eventually become, but that's entirely speculative. Still, the idea that we see so many images of the Emperor with a halo could simply also be the illustrative manifestations of him as a divine entity, yet this and the Aquila in his armour could equally be an additional piece of war gear. 
especially one that's now utilised by Astartes and senior figures throughout the Imperium. Now the armour of the Emperor would be classified as Artificer Armour. It's simply a name given to custom and modified suits of power armour for either strength or simply visual embellishment. These suits, as with the Emperors, will use customised plating, marks with potentially specialised war gear or additional positional shielding. These suits can often be visually awe-inspiring works of art with inscriptions, representations of animals or imperial scripture adorning them. Moreover, these suits of armour worn not just by the Emperor but all Astartes are often very old and continually tweaked and upgraded. They're often then visually inscribed with important battles or events so that they become over time an almost historical documentation in their own right. Artificer armour though, as the Emperor would have worn, will have many individual upgrades and custom modifications over time, to the point where despite their age they become so unique and specialised to be superior to even newer suits of power armour. The status both visually and mechanically of Artificer armour means that it may even be chosen by a Space Marine over having a choice of arguably much more greatly powerful Terminator armour, such as the honour and associated prestige in wearing Artificer armour. It's important to understand this in the sense of how revered standard Space Marine Artificer armour is to an Astartes if you can call it standard, because if you think of how much prestige and honour and strength is given to the wearer of this armour, you can perhaps begin to visualise in the smallest way the power, strength and inspiration that the Emperor's armour would instil to his Astartes. The Emperor's golden armour is far more than just a battle suit worn for protection. Is a visual display of his power, his position and his boundless intellect. To see it as just a shiny gold suit of armour is to fundamentally not understand the gravitas to which it would be seen by his Astartes and members of the Imperium. Such a master crafted suit would undoubtedly as well have been tweaked and finessed by the Emperor himself and so it would no doubt have been one of the strongest suits of power armour ever created. The Emperor also had additional backups of this suit of armour to use if need be, but all of these would be repurposed after the fall of the Emperor at the end of the Horus Heresy. For the Emperor's armour would actually be ground down to fine shards and embedded in each Crux Terminatus. These are the stone medallions awarded to the highest skilled veteran space marines of the Imperium. The Crux Terminatus stone badges are worn on the left shoulder of their Terminator armour, and it might seem a strange thing to do with such a vastly powerful and revered piece of armour such as the Emperor's, but it's important to understand again the rationale here. Because this is something which is often asked, why would they grind down the Emperor's armour? Well, these shards that were embedded into the Crux Terminatus were gifts given to the Astartes who had remained loyal to the Emperor at the end of the heresy. That's why they did it. There was some vagueness as well around the fact that originally it was said that only the first suits of Terminator armour contained the shards of the Emperor's armour, that only Terminator captains would have this, but it's more commonly believed that all Crux Terminatus contain a shard of the golden armour of the Emperor, meaning that whatever fragments are held therein are very very small indeed, but even holding the smallest fragment is an honour for these Marines beyond estimation. This also gives some further understanding as to why Space Marines will fight so hard to recover these suits of tactical dreadnought armour, because to lose one is to lose a shard of the Emperor's armour, and this is simply unthinkable and a devastating dishonour. The Emperor's Sword It's known simply as such. Other weapons wielded by Primarchs often may have a customised name, but for such an iconic weapon, no other title is needed other than that of its rightful owner. The most powerful of blades is a relic blade used by the Emperor throughout the Great Crusade and during his final battle with Horus at the end of the Heresy. It would eventually be passed through to the Ultramarine's Primarch Reboot Guleman. The ownership of such a prestigious weapon would cement his position as Lord Commander of the Imperium. Now, The Emperor's blade is undoubtedly a force weapon. These are usually used by Psykers and now the Grey Knights as well. They allow a Psyker to attune with the weapon and extend and amplify their psychic power through the weapon. Force weapons essentially channel energy from the warp through the weapon, giving it devastating power, far beyond that of a standard material weapon. They're most often used to combat creatures who are more resistant to conventional weapons, especially demons of the warp. This is why they're often the weapon of choice for the powerful Grey Knights, who are often tasked with fighting the dark creatures of the Immaterium. The sword having been touched and infused by the Emperor's psychic power only exacerbates its immense, finely mastercrafted power. 
The flames that are often seen to engulf and pour from the blade, creating arcing pyrotechnic displays when seen in battle, are not literal fire but psychic fire, burning hot psychic energy, pouring out of the blade itself and allowing it to eviscerate and carve through the heaviest of armor effortlessly. Only using the combined strength of the most powerful psychic entities or demons would someone or something be able to resist its devastating strength. Now force weapons can be wielded by a non-psyker, but it will obviously have none of the powers of that psyker. But sometimes if a psyker is exceptionally powerful, they can instill their power to the weapon. And this is the case with the Emperor's Blade. Whilst undoubtedly still nowhere near as powerful as it would be in the Emperor's hands, the residual power embedded in the weapon gives it more than enough psychic power to be a terrifyingly devastating weapon against the enemies of humanity. Guleman has stated that he feels the Emperor's presence when using the blade and that he is sure that there are secrets to it that only the Emperor can know that will allow the weapon to become even more powerful. Lastly, we come to two other weapons of the Emperor his powerful eagle lightning claw, and yes, a bolter. Now, in nearly all images of the Emperor, you see him with the sword in his right hand and an immense claw in the left. And this is the eagle-like lightning claw, which is undoubtedly at least as powerful as a modern standard lightning claw, but likely much more powerful given the known strength of the Emperor's sword. A standard lightning claw are used now as a pair of melee weapons used by Space Marines and Terminator armor, and these have adamantium blades which are sheathed in a disruption field, allowing them to carve easily through armor and flesh. However, these are usually more fixed-like blades in nature and used to sweep through enemies and carve them to pieces. The Emperor's Claw is much more articulated. We often see it illustrated as being far more mobile than a modern Terminator's lightning claw, and this is because the Emperor's Claw looks much more similar to the Crusade lightning claws of this period. Early Terminator armor users in the Crusade could have a single claw which enabled them to then use a ranged weapon in their right hand, but modern Terminators use them double-handed to rend and tear through the enemies in savage close quarter combat. So while little is documented about the Emperor's claw, we could speculate that the use of it would have been just as savage but potentially more useful than just a fixed blade for slashing like the modern lightning claw. An articulated mobile claw fist would enable the user to grab, restrain, dismember enemies, twist their bodies and tear through them. Given the Emperor's skill as a warrior and his supporting blade of psychic fire, there's very little doubt that the claw seen to be used as part of the Emperor's war gear would be an equally powerful piece of that set. However, because it was not an individual weapon piece like the Emperor's sword, it was part of the armor moreover, it's very possible that this was also turned into shards for the Crux Terminatus. Lastly, something often queried, did the Emperor use ranged weapons? But it's not something widely documented, if at all, because the battles describing the Emperor are very minimal at best. He's been seen to use what appears to be a master-crafted bolter at clearly an early period during his rise to become the Emperor of Mankind. This was perhaps a time before he would more regularly use his dedicated bladed weapons. And given the reverence again with which Astartes and the Imperium view bolter weapons, it's entirely feasible that the Emperor could have used a specialized, mastercrafted ancient iteration of such a weapon. Because bolters are, after all, the signature weapon of the Astartes and the Imperium, it's not something commonly documented or that has been seen though. The Emperor's blade remains the only holy relic of the Emperor to now be used in physical combat against the enemies of humanity, if you discount the shards imbued to the Terminator Astartes of the Imperium, of course. While all the Emperor's war gear had unquestionable strength and power, this was only possible because of the Emperor himself, his skill as a warrior, a tactician, and a leader. Even now, some 10,000 years later, his weapons still strike absolute fear into his enemies wielded now by the Lord Commander of the Imperium. The Emperor's blade is the Emperor's will.